Hello everybody, I, my name is Roland Backley. I am the consciousness designer here in Braganza, Portugal. Hello, my name is Lourdes. I'm an English teacher and I'm very pleased to be with you today uh, because actually it's a great pleasure uh, and I'm very honored to be with you because there are some kinds of things that I don't understand and I have the opportunity to read your book, which was very good, but still I have some doubts about the things that you wrote and uh, I would like to clarify some of uh, these things. Okay. <laughs> well, um, my first question has to do with the, a part of your book in which you wrote that um, it is actually a question, are people relaxed? at night while they're sleeping and uh, from my self um, experience um, I don't think that I'm relaxed at night while I'm sleeping uh, people are all different I know but sometimes uh, when I wake up I feel uh, that I'm already tired and um, probably that's what I think, but you're here to, to tell me that. It's because I, um, I had a lot of things to think while I was sleeping. And the most confusing part of it is that sometimes I mix up things. Um, in a minute, I'm thinking of a person, for example, that was very important in my life. And then I see that person in a different place that I don't, I, I'd never been there before. And immediately, I turn to a different subject, you know, uh, for example, uh, something that concerned me during the day, you know, when I was, for example, helping uh, um, a friend of mine, and she told me, well, don't put the things like uh, there, put it in a different place. And it's so confusing. And during the time I'm sleeping, I feel that I, I work a lot. So, um, my question is, why, why do you think that it happens? Is it because of my concern to try to do everything at the time? Or, or does it have another reason? Why is it that I can't sleep well at night and uh, I wake up relaxed and ready for another day? Well, certainly some people do work a lot during the night. And... Often that work is not very efficient, the same as one can improve one's efficient work efficiency in the daytime, one can improve one's work efficiency at night time. Now trying to do everything at once in the daytime is one way to get, say, 90% less things done. And at night time, uh, trying to do everything at once, um, one also gets less work done. Uh, some um, researchers into sleep science in the United States have actually calculated that the sleep debt, like from poor quality sleep, mm -hmm. actually costs the American economy more money than the entire national debt. Uh, you know, accidents on the road, deaths from sleepiness, uh, inefficiency, you know, waking up tired. Mm -hmm. uh, and if one had a greater quality of sleep, then one would um, uh, have a much more productive daytime. Now, some recommendations they make would be such things as, uh, you know, never watch television in the bedroom. Yeah, that's uh, what we mostly the do. The bedroom is for, uh, <laughs> like, should be associated with sex or sleep, but not with... Um, television. I know if I watch television it's because there's so many impulses going on. I'd like my brain to be numb for a little while. Yeah. Now watch the television to stop all useful action in my brain. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not necessarily the best uh, preparation for sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's a variety of ways of making your sleep much more efficient, especially associating your bed with what you want to associate it with, which ideally is not stress, 
Yeah, of course. Now, the first uh, hour and a half of the night, which you'll find in the book, uh, ideally is for dreaming off the, the random acts of the day. Yeah. Um, so, you just let go. As for your brain to do that, you don't, like it's a natural cleaning process. So uh, you don't want to think stress as you're going to sleep. You just, I'll relax and let them do it. Whoever they is, you know, your various minds, you know, <laughs> or the dream masters. Oh, right. You know, th those that help during the night, which um, may be aspects of yourself mm -hmm. and may be visitors. Uh, it's unimportant to think who they are, but right. I'm going to sleep now. You worry about this. Right. Okay, so in your in your book, you actually uh, talk about some of the techniques we should use before we go to sleep, and that will help us to have uh, dreaming quality. Um, well, but you already told us that it's not very good to to watch television before you go to bed. Um, so, uh, for example, um, what do you think would be more effective? Uh, for people to have this um, dreaming quality and uh, help them wake up in a relaxed way because we know that uh, it makes all the difference in the work you're going to do during the day, right? Well, it's a matter of just before you sleep asking for your minds to align themselves and work together. It's a simple request. It's uh, letting go and um, it's been demonstrated, I've been saying this for like 40 years, but sleep scientists proved like a very short number of years ago, that nothing goes into long-term memory until, the, uh, until there's been a REM sleep, mm -hmm. which will be the second hour and a half during your night. Like if you have a student that studies some English and they're... They've memorized some words and then they stay up all night partying. They haven't had any REM sleep, which puts it into long-term memory. Yeah. And um, uh, where people are deprived of the second stage of REM sleep for days, nothing goes into long-term memory for those uh, days. It, the, the, the brain is busy doing a lot of things during the night. Uh, one can also work during the night um, healing the environment, uh, um, helping other people be happy, but that should never be the first part of the night. The first part of the night is for your day to dissolve off. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to start working on anything for anybody else. Yeah. The first part of the night. And just kind of knowing that, you have a right to... Um, I'm sleeping to let go of today. So you let go of it and you, the brain will let go of it. And uh, then you've just, you've made a little request that um, later on during the night, um, you know, various like emotions you want to release. There's techniques in the book, very simple mm -hmm. for releasing emotions, which are so hard to release during the day. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, why do people experience such heavy emotions during the day? Um, if we kind of think of the word, like, it could easily be seen as energy in motion. Yeah. And people say, I'm feeling anger, like energy is paralyzed. I'm feeling hatred, energy is paralyzed. It's, they're basically speaking backwards. They're saying I have an emotion when it stopped moving. Yeah. yeah, so people have negative emotions as a substitute for doing anything. Like, I'm so angry this person did something, instead of actually um, doing something real. Now, for example, um, uh, somebody um, spread a, a rumor to uh, a high official here that there's some Australian that has some thoughts that aren't acceptable for Portugal. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And um, 
I, I couldn't, uh, there was just a refusal to even register my process to be here. God, for, but why is it? For nine months, well, um, that's an interesting subject too. <laughs> but there was a refusal to register, to even ex accept my process for nine months. So, um, what would I do with that? This is unjust and be angry. Well, now, if I was angry, I would be feeling an emotion instead of acting. Yeah, of course. Okay, so I thought of the possibilities, which would be, um, uh, you know, to file a criminal charge against uh, a high-level government officer, mm -hmm. or finish writing this book. <laughs> now, when all the ladies in the immigration office read the book, Instead of a person with funny ideas, I'm an author. They respect authors. <laughs> so yeah. if, if you deal with, with anger, yeah, in the, a the energy way. is not moving. Yeah, okay, okay, I understand that. But uh, you know, um, I think generally speaking, of course, uh, people tend to be more um, thinking of the negative things than on the positive. And that's probably the worst aspect of everything. Uh, because there are people that have this problem with in dealing with emotions and if they don't have, let's call it an advisor, uh, they won't change. And I have my experience because uh, unfortunately I'm surrounded by people uh, who actually are completely different uh, from what I am. And I try to see things uh, in a way you said, in a positive way, try to let it go, try to do things in, in a way that it comes with a good thing, you know. Uh, but I know people that don't, don't accept that. They say, okay, imagine, uh, well, someone said or did something mm, which was uh, bad for me, and my reaction is, okay, uh, I'll let it go, uh, we'll probably have a conversation, we'll probably try to clarify things. But my, I, I think that most of the people don't think this way. Okay, if you said or you did something bad to me, so I'll reply and I'll give you my revenge. And in my point of view, that's why the world faces this big problem of lack of understanding. And... Uh, we need to be trained to, to do things in a good way. Because um, if we don't have a leader, I mean, if we don't have a person who's directing us, it's very complicated because you will think that you're correct all the time and that things should, should go that way. Well, you know, when people are blaming others, well, I generally prefer not to use simple-minded cliches. Yeah. We have to... One of the only ones I really use is if you want to point the finger at somebody, you really need to know there's three fingers pointing back. Right? Yeah. And um, it's um, sometimes necessary to learn to speak in some different way. But if the other person is really bad, Mm -hmm. If it's true, like if there is such truth, yeah. that wouldn't that be a good reason not to internalize it and make yourself sick? Like if, I, like if you take uh, the emotion of hatred, you're basically describing some people with some hateful attitudes. They did this to me, I'll do something back. Now, um, every negative emotion twists up time or your timeline in a different way. Mm -hmm. Now, in the case of hatred, uh, time is going forwards and backwards. Right? How is it? You have to pull, to hate somebody, you have to pull them closer to you to hit them away. Yeah. So your flexor muscles and your extensor muscles are activated at the same time. And that destroys your energy very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Now, hatred, you're pulling, like, the, the flexion and the extension is together and you're paralyzed like this. 
Yeah. Now, if I did this for two minutes or even less, yeah. then I would contract the muscles of my brachial plexus. I'd have hardly any blood flow to the hands, and you know that's the price of aging. Yeah. You're making an image inside yourself of who you don't want. And you, you don't want them out there, so you put them in your head. Yeah. But that's the craziness of negative emotions. So um, that's why we, I have trainings to help people with this. Because, um, you know, every negative emotion is um, tying your own self up in knots yeah. for what somebody else did. And you're internalizing it and then making um, psychosomatic illnesses. If there is any illness that isn't at least partly psychosomatic. Yeah. But, uh, well, um, you know, my, my question actually is, uh, because sometimes people are very skeptical related to the th things of um, training training your emotions, training um, the way the way you can act or and I think that mostly people don't believe that it can really be effective. Um, so um, my question is, is there a specific um, technique or, or thing that we we can use to make people believe that in fact we need to, to to deal with our emotions in a different way? Speaking flexibly. Yeah. Speaking flexibly. And if they don't want to listen? It's impossible that they don't if you have flexibility of voice. Now, I notice your particular voice is the most musical I've ever heard in <laughs> Portuguese. And thank you. <laughs> But when you are talking about people with their negative emotions, your voice goes hard, almost, not as bad as the average Portuguese, but it starts to go in that direction. And you know why? Because I feel you know things. Why? No, why? I feel things. And, and I want to help and I, I want to be active. And it, it makes me a confusion if the person is not listening to me because... It's not that I think I'm the, the right person or, or the person that understands everything in the world. Oh, come on. No, no way. That's not it. But I mean, for example, if you have a problem, I can notice it. And I want to reach your heart and I want to reach your awareness of that. And you're not listening and say, oh, come on, shut up. Don't you, you don't know anything about this. And I say, come well, on, yeah, you, know, you have right. to listen to me. You in particular... <laughs> can reach my heart easily. You in particular can reach Nalita's heart easily. You in particular can reach Robert's heart easily. But when you think they're not listening, you leave the focus of the heart. All right. Yeah. Now, the word listening, you see, um, in the subject of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, they have this idea there are people who are visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Uh -huh. Now, while there are more or less, it's possible to classify people that way for sales techniques or whatever, yeah. visual as a mind or auditory as a mind, auditory is the emotional mind. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So when you say they're not listening, there is lack of the auditory channel. Mm -hmm. So your voice goes higher, higher and then the head, and you suddenly turn from auditory to visual. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. talking about people who are not listening. Mm -hmm. And true, they're not listening, but when you speak that way, neither are you listening. Yeah, you're right. So that. um, that's why in all of my therapeutic training. I'm not interested in just retraining what they should do and how they should think because thinking is very overrated. Now, if you were to care to read um, Albert Einstein's descriptions of how he made his discoveries, uh -huh. 
they are all what he called thought experiments or 3D images. But if you actually read his description, I think he said 3D to relax people. Mm -hmm. They are really like five dimensional images. They have observers outside of time, observers outside the universe, observers in the system, multiple level observers, and there was no words in his thinking. Yeah. Okay? He's <laughs> not, people mistake thinking for making words go round in circles. Yeah. Now, yeah. Einstein didn't have that problem, but he was simpler, actually. A lot simpler than making clever words go in circles. He put it right there um, and visualized. So, when a person is not listening, what I teach my uh, therapy students to do is to speak to the visceral mind. Okay. The visceral mind here. Uh, because if a person is not listening, who are they not listening to most? The force down here. Okay. And um, if you feel the soul of the person deeper in their body than what isn't listening, they become speechless in seconds. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. Now people tell me you can't put um, like metro psychiatrists in trance easily. Mm. Oh, they're so easy. Now I just find out like What's your mother's name? Oh, Mary. Oh, okay. So I look at the psychiatrist behind his eyes and say, as you give birth, Mary, to Bill, if that's the psychiatrist's name, let yeah. the contractions begin. So how can he suddenly, having an education every man needs, mm -hmm. urgent for every man, to actually remember what it was like to be his mother giving birth to him. Then he won't act so noisy, authoritatively. And it's the more rigid there's some therapist like that, the easier they are to get mm -hmm. into a deep trance now. Uh, so for more information on learning deep trances, uh, there is the Consciousness Designer on Facebook and or oh, Ista Lista La Conciencia on Facebook. Um, and don't forget, um, as of another 30 minutes from now, you can also uh, contact on Patreon. Patreon slash Roland Berkeley. So, Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>